Hello everybody, my name is Matthew Bond and today we're going to be showcasing the Cypress Semiconductor PSOC 5LP. This programmable system on a chip combines the power of a Cortex M3 processor with configurable analog and digital peripherals and flexible pin routing. These three things combine to make one of the most versatile and powerful microcontroller solutions on the market. To showcase the power of the PSOC 5, I've created this autonomous nerve blaster controlled by a pair of sensor nodes. Looking closely at these sensor nodes, we can see they consist of a PSOC 5 LP, here shown mounted in this dev board, a variety of sensors, as well as the Cypress Semiconductor PROC BLE radio. The acronym PROC stands for Programmable Radio on a Chip. The first two sensors we're going to talk about are these PIR motion sensors. When one of these sensors detects motion, the PSOC 5 will then use one of its, cor its corresponding proximity sensor to determine if the target is within range. These proximity sensors consist of the ultrasonic distance sensor as well as an analog IR distance sensor. If the target is within range, the PSOC 5 will relay this information via the I2C bus to the programmable radio on a chip. The PROC in turn will then relay this information via Bluetooth Low Energy to the Nerf Blaster. The Nerf Blaster itself is controlled by the PSOC 4 BLE module shown here mounted in the Pioneer BLE development board. When the Nerf Blaster receives data from one of the sensor nodes, it'll turn towards the target, fire, and then return back to its resting position. Before we go and see this thing in action, let's take a closer look into how I programmed these various sensor nodes. Each one of the microcontrollers shown in this demo, the PSOC 4 BLE, the PSOC 5 LP, and the PROC can all be programmed using Cypress Semiconductor's Creator software. The big advantage of, this, of the Creator IDE is it allows you to quickly and easily create and configure both the analog and digital peripherals, as well as route the pins to their desired locations. So here you can see the project for one of the sensor nodes in PSOC Creator. Now, before I mentioned how easy it is to create and configure peripherals in the PSOC Creator IDE. Now, to do that, all you need to do is go over to this component catalog here. Now, what these different components are is basically a pre-built component from Cypress that automatically configures the peripheral in the proper way, as well as generate the APIs for your software to interface with that peripheral. If we take a look at the PIR sensor, we can see that it's simply a pair of digital input pins that interface with the PIR sensors. If, for example, we wanted to add an additional PIR sensor, all we'd have to do is go here to the ports and pins section of the component catalog, select the digital input pin, and drag it onto the schematic. If we double click on this component, we can see that we can change pretty much any of the parameters of the, the component from the name to anything else. Now, all we'd have to do to finish adding this component to our project is go to the build menu and hit the generate application. This last step will generate all the APIs you need to interface this pin into your code. As far as the digital peripherals go, in the PSOC 5 they're all created from what's known as universal digital block. From this block you can create a variety of components such as counter component, PWM component, various different lookup tables, multiplexers, discrete logic gates, etc. As we can see here, for the ultrasonic sensor, I'm using a counter, a flip-flop, and two discrete logic gates to help me keep track of the pulse width of the return signal. For the analog subsystem, you can create such components as an analog to digital converters, amplifiers, specifically op amps, analog multiplexers, comparators, and digital analog converters. For the analog IR sensor, I simply used a successive approximation ADC, which is routed to an analog input pin. Finally, if you want to interface your PSOC with another microcontroller or any other component which is a standard communication interface like I2C or SPI, you can go to this communications folder and simply add any of the components you need to interact with another device. 
If I double click on this I2C component, which I'm using to interface with the PROC, we can see that I can configure all the different um, parameters of the component straight from the GUI. Now the last thing to show is how to route the pins on the PSOC to their desired output. Unlike with other microcontrollers, you're not bound to a specific output pin for each of your functions. For example, if you want to route the PIR3 pin that we created earlier, all we'd have to do is simply select which output pin we want that function to go to. As we can see, we're currently not using pin 127, so we can simply route it to that. If you generate the application without routing the pin, it'll auto-route the pin for you. This ability to route the pins dynamically is a big advantage that the PSOC has when compared to other microcontrollers. Now to know how it works, let's go and have some fun with it. Thanks for watching.